Hey guys, in the last couple of years, I've been learning how to use my camera here. I got my fancy cinema camera, learning how to use cameras in general. I was pretty much a noob before I was just using my webcam, et cetera, et cetera. So because of this recent journey, this new skill set I've been developing over the last couple of years, it's reminded me of uh, the progression in terms of learning anything new, whether it be learning cameras, whether it be learning software development, it could be web design, it could be web programming, a new language, it could be martial arts. There's a, there's a consistent uh, progression that you should expect. And so I'm going to go over, I listed five points here. And um, yeah, yeah, five points. So I'm going to go over each of them and hopefully it will help you out as you are learning anything. All right. Principle number one, expect to make mistakes. That's normal. I know there's a lot of students, they're, uh, they're worried about making mistakes. They write code, and, uh, it doesn't work, and, and they get flustered. And, oh my, oh my, I'm making mistakes. See, that's a symptom, if you will, of a modern school system where if you fail a particular test, it can have a, a long-term detrimental impact in terms of your academic career. In the real world, business, whatever, anything really, especially programming, you have to expect to make mistakes. So expect you're going to be making mistakes, especially in the early stages until you develop your nerd eyes. And nerd eyes is just my way of saying your ability to read code so the code reads like English. I teach you how to get there. Don't worry, you're going to make mistakes. It's part of the process. The next thing you have to recognize is where you are good and where you are bad. One of the things I saw in the past, especially back in the heyday uh, when I had the Killer Sites forum and I was active on there uh, quite a bit. It's still around, but you know I, I spend more time on YouTube and other social and the forum, although people still post there. There's lots of information there. Anyway, one of the things I was trying to drive home to people is you have to determine if you are a front-end person or a back-end person. In those days, especially having a good eye for aesthetics, for UI, UX, user interface, user experience, ability, uh, to be able to put that together was, uh, yeah, that's a very different skill set from, from being a back-end developer. And what I found is people are, tend to be inclined to one or the other. You're either going to be good with a back-end and the logic and the, of structuring back-end code, or you're going to be good on the front-end. Uh, in terms of the aesthetics, UX, UI. So you got to acknowledge what you know and be honest to yourself about that. The worst thing you can do, the worst thing you can do is to get caught up in something where you're not inclined to it. So if you're five foot two, I think your aspirations to become a basketball player is probably not the best idea, right? Or if you're six foot seven, it's probably not the best idea to go into gymnastics. You see what I'm saying? Same thing when it comes to development. You have to figure out where you're inclined. So how do you do that? You learn your foundations, you learn your foundations. And so this way, uh, the foundations, by the way, are, ex are expressed uh, or shared on both the front and back end development to a great extent. Not 100%, but I'd say 80%. So, you want to touch on all these different things. You want to explore these, these different things. And then you'll figure out, explore a little bit of UI, UX, explore a little bit of uh, backend server uh, work, um, explore a bit of database design, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then what happens, you have a taste of it, and then you're going to see what, where you're good, right? You're going to see where you're good. Again, this is something you see in smart martial artists, modern martial artists, MMA guys. They go in there, they do a bit of grappling, they do a bit of submission, they do takedowns, they do striking, upper body striking hands, lower body kicking. They, they try different things and they know that in an MMA context, you have to be well-rounded. Well, same thing with a street fight, of course. Same thing with programming. You have to look around, try different things, and then you pick your specializations. You see that in MMA, guys will try different things. But, you know, some people will be more geared towards striking, but they still know the ground game. And more geared, or ground people or grapplers, they still uh, know, you know, their stand-up game to a certain extent. But they concentrate on whatever they are good at. That is a major... Uh, 
point, if you will, a philosophical point that I really believe in. Yeah, be honest of where you're good and where you're bad, and then focus your attention on where you are good. Because if you focus on your attention on where you are bad, you'll probably be at best an average, mediocre to average in that particular field. So if you're not good with UX, UI, as an example, you could work really hard, you might get mediocre, you might get okay. But if you're really good at back end, you concentrate on back end, you're gonna be really good at back end. You're gonna you're, you're do much better in your career, make much more money. Number three, when you hit a wall, when you're trying to learn something, when you hit something that's hard, you don't understand, it's, it's not sinking in. First of all, you take a break, you walk away for half an hour, uh, an hour, a day or two. It will come to you. But when you hit that wall, you should get excited. That's a good thing, because that means you're challenging your brain. That means you're pushing the boundaries. That means you are making progress. Any weightlifter will tell you about that. To build the body, you gotta push your body behind, beyond its normal levels of comfort, if you will, so that the body uh, is triggered to build new muscle. You gotta think of it that way. When you hit something, when you're learning and you're having difficulty, that means you're just gonna be upping your mental capacity. So it's a good thing. Get excited when you hit the wall. Number four, if it is hard, then you know you are doing something worthwhile. See, the path of least resistance when it comes to career and business is the path to least amount of money. Anything that's easy to do will get driven down in its value because anybody can do it. Things that are perceived as fun as doing will get driven down in value because a lot of people will be driven to do it. But if you do something that is, uh, that is hard or perceived as hard or perceived as unpleasant, the value of whatever that is you are doing is far more valuable. That's why you see today in freelancing, PHP, which is hated by a lot of noobs because it just got a bad uh, reputation these days, PHP is extremely profitable for freelance in many, many parts because, well, partly because of that, because a lot of people just don't want to do PHP, but also because there's just so many small businesses on PHP, so there's a lot of demand. Um, same thing with software development. A lot of people don't want to go into uh, back end because they perceive it as being very difficult versus front end. Yet, yeah, it's a lot easier to design a good looking page aesthetically, aesthetically, than it is in terms of the hurdles, right, to get into it versus learning how to de design a good back end system. That being said, good UX de developers and designers, very rare, very rare. The problem with that is though, um, it's so rare that even business owners, people who pay the bills, don't recognize good UX from bad UX. They don't recognize how difficult it is. Some do, but not the general public. So uh, yeah, you want to find something that's worthwhile. So find something where the barriers to entry are high. Barriers, you know, you got a barrier, entry is high. So if something is difficult, that probably means it's valuable. So that's a good thing. Number five. Well, number five is actually the opposite. Number four, if it is easy, it is likely not worth much. Again, if something is easy, then everybody's doing it. And if, if everybody's doing it, basic economics kicks in supply and demand. If you got more supply, more people doing it, it drives down the cost. So it drives down the value. So you always want to uh, look for something that's worthwhile learning. Look for something that's hard to learn. Yeah, so number four and five are kind of uh, part one and two of the same concept. So there you go. In summary, number one, when you're learning, expect mistakes, whether you be learning coding, business, whatever. Number two, be honest of where you are good and bad, concentrate on where you're good. Number three, when you hit a wall, get excited because that means you're breaking new ground. And number four, if it is hard, then you know you are doing something worthwhile and valuable. And number five, if it's easy, it's likely not worth too much. I hope these uh, philosophical tips make sense to you. They've worked for me over the years and uh, yeah, they work really well for me over the years and I know they will for you if you just implement them. All right, I hope this helps, bye-bye.